Hey y'all, it's your girl Bobby J here. Welcome to my channel, June BLC. Hey, hey, hey there, everybody. We are back. It's your girl Bobby J here with the recap and review of Tyler Perry's comedy drama, Sisters, season eight. Yes, episode one, Dead Man Walking. And we are back. It was an interesting episode. I enjoyed it. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I found it very entertaining. Okay. And before we get started, if you are new here or if you're returning here and have not subscribed to this channel as of yet, please take them a minute right now and hit that subscribe button. That's right. Hit the subscribe button. Then hit the notification bell. Select all. It'll let you know every time I upload any new content to this channel. Then I ask that you smash that like button. You know, the thumbs up button. Write a comment and join our conversation and share because sharing is caring. And we will be going live on Thursday night, October 16th. So please do not miss it at around, I guess I'm going to say 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm sorry, that is October 17th. Thursday, October 17th, we are going live because today is the 16th. Anywho, this episode starts off with them interrogating any and everybody who showed up to that wedding and could have possibly been responsible for stabbing Gary. Okay, and just to let y'all know, during the investigation, they are talking to everybody and a couple of them, they're letting them know that Gary is dead. They thought he was fighting for his life, but then they learned that he supposedly had died. So I don't know if the detectives found out later that he survived, but they still were going at them, at each person, as if Gary died. And so then we learn that um, Agent Watt, he told, I think it was Andy, that they're doing a joint and local federal operation that he's teamed up with Detective Morgan from the Atlanta PD. And they were like, you remember him, right? I can't remember who he is. He looks familiar, but who is he? Did he have something to do with the case with Sabrina and Maurice in the bank robbery? Please let me know down in the comment section because I really can't remember. So the first person we see being interrogated is Andy by Agent Watt. And he wants to know how does she go from wanting to testify against Gary Borders to wanting to marry him. And I was like, that's a good damn question. And it's something she was sitting there going, oh, it's um complicated and it's a long story. And he's like, well, I got nothing but time, baby. <laughs> she just like, I don't know what she was doing, but he was getting on her nerves. His questioning um became a little I guess intense or rude and so she gets tired of it and gets up to leave and he tells her to sit back down and she sits back down so I was like oh boy here we go then we have detective Morgan the one from the Atlanta PD he's interrogating or questioning Hudson and 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 he's the black detective just to let y'all know anyway he was claiming that um Andy um, Hudson was saying that Andy was the one who was corrupt and she was a gold digging, a greedy biatch and all of this stuff. And I was like, what? How are you going to say that about him? You know, meanwhile, Hudson saying that he was Gary's best friend, that Gary was like a brother to him. I said, when did this happen? They were in there doing evil stuff together. And, and Detective Morgan ran down all the Ponzi schemes and stuff that they were doing. I said, oh, snap. So anyway, but then the detective was sticking holes in um, Hudson's story about Andy. And then he told him to go look into Andy's slutty girlfriends. I said, ain't this something? Telling biz that some of their business. So next we see Agent Watt. He's interrogating or questioning Karen. And he was rude to her by talking about her two baby daddies for uh, for her twins. And he pointed out her, her salon and roots to riches with Pam. Then he mentioned, you know, Aaron and Marie Willis both being investors in roots to riches and how Marie Ellis used to be. You, um, she once invested in Gary's um, business and lost a whole lot of money. And Karen's like, she didn't know nothing about that. You know what I mean? So. But he was saying, you do know what, when he was talking about the name of her salon, and he was asking her something about it. I can't remember. 
uh, the, the, the name of it, what, what did it mean or something like that, the meaning of it. And she was like, I know what that means. And she said, don't let the Southern twain fool you. I'm an educated black woman. I said, yes, yes, yes. Tell him, Karen. I was all for it. I was like, she put him in check. Then we have detective Morgan. He was, um, interviewing or questioning Sabrina. And she was nervous, you know, she kept looking around because it was bringing back, you know, I guess um, when she got arrested before and bringing back those flashbacks, she probably was being triggered at that point. And he brought up her charge. He said, you're nervous. She says, it obvious. He said, yeah. He said, I guess I would be. And he said, if, if I was being charged for conspiracy to commit felony bank robbery, and she quickly put him in check and letting him know that was a uh, complete, I was completely innocent in that. And he also mentioned, you know, um, Maurice's name too. You know, then he says things like she seems to have a way of working things out in her favor because she, both she and Maurice got their jobs back and she didn't have to do no jail time, but she did do jail time because they took all her braids out her hair and stuff. Didn't she stay in jail for a couple of days? Somebody let me know in the comment section. And then she let them know, look, those people are my family. He's talking about his sisters because they started. he started talking about her friends from college. And she said, they're like my family. I would do anything for them. He said, including kill. And she's like, no. You know, so you got to be careful when these detectives and stuff are interviewing you and questioning you because you got to be very careful what you say. Then we have Agent Watt um, questioning Danny, and she's smoking her vape pen. And she told him that she went to the... Uh, that she went to the wedding to F that ish up. <laughs> I said, oh my God. He said, <laughs> she said, <laughs> she wakes up every day and choose violence. You know, I was like, oh my goodness. And she told him that she had told Karen, um, uh, Andy, that she would burn that place down. He said, oh, now we're getting somewhere. She said, but unfortunately, by the time I got there, somebody had turned him into Swiss cheese. <laughs> but he was telling her to stop vaping. She couldn't vape in there. She said, what you going to do? arrest me for vaping, you know, she just, she didn't care, you know what I mean, Danny was acting a hot mess, but I'll be honest, she was reminding me of Maurice, acting how he acted when he was being questioned and answering with these silly replies that end up getting him in trouble, so I was like, she better hope she don't get locked up, because whenever, she said, who, and, oh, and she also said, whoever killed Gary should get a key to the city, because they are an American treasure, I said, I said, she's so crazy. At that time, uh, Agent Watt was done with her because she kept telling me, you know, everybody else was like, he had to call him by their last name, Miss This and Miss That. She's like, no, you could call me Danny. <laughs> he was like, oh, God, he was sick of her. Then we have um, Detective Morgan interviewing Zach, and he kept asking. Zach just kept asking for attorney, asking for attorney. He didn't want to say nothing. He said, I'm not saying a word until I have my attorney there. And I didn't blame Zach one bit. I was right there with him, but then Detective Morgan brought up Zach's brother. He brought up Fatima. He brought up Heather and little Michael. I said, this piece of ish, these detectives was getting on my nerve. And Zach snapped on the detective when it came to Fatima and Mikey. He said, well, maybe you start cooperating and we will. And he made some comment and he's like, wait, Gary's dead? You know, everybody thought he was just fighting for his life, but then he supposedly be dead and they're finding out. Then we had Agent Watt with um, interviewing Fatima, and he kept trying to get under Fatima's skin with his comments. However, mm -mm, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. He failed to get a rise out of Fatima the entire time, so he was wasting his time. Then we had Jordan, and that was Detective Morgan was interviewing him, and he mentions Penelope a, bit, a little bit, and Andy, and... Jordan is like, I refuse to help you guys come up with a suspect. And he wasn't doing anything. He, they were trying to make it seem like he, it was possibly him because Andy left him for Gary and all of this stuff. And he was like, he was happy to know that his sister was going to testify against Gary. So he was good with that. Then we had a couple of little quick scenes here and there in between this and that. There was a quick scene with Rich and Tony at the juice bar. And they're talking about both their girls, you know, and then, um, Andy, you know, I, I was getting sick of Rich trying to say Andy was this and that and nah, da, 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 da. He don't, you don't know Andy like that. 
So stop acting like it was Andy's fault. You know, Andy was the, the, the problem. Then we have a scene with Sabrina coming home to find Rich in her apartment and waiting for her. And she was just say, telling him how she felt. And he was they were sitting on the couch and he just held her and hugged her. But, you know, she stopped at home before she was going to go to work. I said, he's sitting up in your damn house. You gave him your key. He could be going through all your stuff. And he didn't even know if you were going to stop by home before going to work. I just think it's weird that these girls are so quick to give their house keys to these men. I don't know what's going on. Do they have keys to those men's houses? Hmm. Somebody to put it down in the comment section what you think about that. Anyway, then we have Danny coming home and she starts writing in her journal. And then Rich comes in with his key and she wants to have sex. He wants to talk, you know, and she's like, no, she's like, she wants to release what she's going through. She don't, she just don't want to hear about it. He's reminded her, you just went through this and that. She's like, I know, I already know what I went through. You what? You don't want this. You don't want me to ride you. You don't want this. You know, he's like, I want to talk to you. I said, what are you, a freaking therapist? That's what she has Cresha for. She don't need to talk to you. She just needs to release the anxiety and everything in her that she needs to get out. Dude, stop trying to be her freaking therapist. You don't even know how to handle your own kids and your ex-wife. So stop trying to talk to her like you can help somebody. You need to get your own help. I'm just saying, y'all, forgive me. Then we have a scene oh, with Pam showing up to Karen's house apartment to bring her, um, look like coffee or something like that, and to give her a ride to work because they're besties now, you know, because she said, because I stood up for you against um, both Fatima and Danny. So Karen's like, okay, fine. I remember something like that. <laughs> I said, look at Pam. She got to remind people. Then we have Zach and Fatima thinking the other might have killed Gary because they had split up at one point while they were at the wedding venue. This is what they're telling us. We never saw them arrive there. And then Fatima decides that she and Zach are going to figure out who actually killed Gary because right now it's still murder in their minds. They have no idea that Gary is alive. Then we have Hudson showing up at the hospital to check on Gary, and he learns that Gary did flatline and die on the table, but they were able, the trauma team was able to revive him again, so Gary is alive. All right, then there's the scene with Hayden. He's watching the news about Gary's murder on TV while packing a suitcase and he's packing and then he's looking for his passport, wondering where his passport is. He's like, he looking guilty. He looking guilty for sure. So y'all know Tyler is trying to make us think that it was Hayden who killed Gary. I have a feeling it still wasn't him. I really, really do. And then we hear Hayden saying, Gary got what he deserves and so will she. And that's when he opens up his front door and who's standing there but Tamara. And she was like going somewhere and she was looking fierce. She had on this like lime green spandex dress, looking sexy with the new sexy hairstyle coming down, that whole Elvira look. I don't know, it was pushed to the side. And she just walked in and that was that scene. But she was working it and looking hot doing it, baby. And then it ends with Andy still being interrogated or even harassed at this point by Agent Watt. And he tells her that, you know, she is the only one still there being questioned because she's telling him none of my friends are capable of doing this type of thing. And he said, that's why you're the only one that's still here. and We've already let them go in their home and all that stuff because she... The, honestly, honestly, I think he's thinking she's the only one who has all the answers. And she said it was a long story about why she was back with Gary, but they didn't have us hear her tell him or anything like that. So now at this point, she's about to tell him why she was going to marry Gary Borders. And I was like, is she going to tell the truth about Jordan and what he was doing? And as she was about to do that, who comes busting in that room? Oh my God, who comes busting in that interrogated room? Yes, baby, but Robin. I said, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. I was in the house screaming with joy, with delight. I was so excited about this moment right there. And that's how the episode ended. I was like, what? That's what I, 
I, I should have known Tyler would end something like that. So y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode down in the comment section because I enjoyed it. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what score people gave. I would give it an eight myself. I'll be honest. So anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And I will see you all in the next video. It's your girl, Barbie J, saying peace.